A few weeks ago when uh, I recorded the video for doing performance-based routing and route maps, when we got digging fairly deep into uh, manipulating the, the, the next hop in a route map, uh, we came across an option for using a track object. And I had mentioned at that time that uh, I would probably come back and do another video based on object tracking. So that's what I threw together for this video. And what we're going to do here is we're gonna we're gonna look at two options for object tracking and let me uh, let me point out what we're going to be dealing with here first what our scenario is and then then we'll go through two options using object tracking to achieve our objective so we're mostly going to be playing down here in this remote office now uh, this remote office has a few user networks connected to it it's got a connection directly to the internet using uh, this uh, slash 30 IP address and then additionally it has a point-to-point -point circuit going from the remote office up to the corporate headquarters uh, landing on this router one and then the corporate headquarters also has a circuit to the internet for this scenario uh, our remote office here they want to send their internet bound traffic through this circuit uh, and then out through the the corporate firewall and into the internet and use this circuit as a backup um, in, in this now, let's say that this circuit maybe here is just a, a T1, whereas over here maybe we have a DS3 or a high-speed circuit. So they're going to get a lot more bandwidth by sending their traffic out this way. Plus it goes to the corporate firewalls and, and whatever else. So this is only to be used as a backup circuit. So that's the scenario that we're going to be starting with. And what we want to do, using object tracking, uh, we want the, the remote office here to use this as their primary path but if something goes wrong up here, something goes down or they can't reach it, we want them to use this path here, their directly connected path. When this, whatever the issue is up top, gets fixed, it flips back over and starts using this traffic again. Um, so we're going to use IP, or excuse me, we're going to be using object tracking uh, to accomplish that. And we're going to set up two scenarios. One, we're going to object track based on what this router sees in its routing table to decide whether it's good to send traffic this way or if it should fail over and send it this way. And then the second scenario, we're going to introduce a little bit of IP SLA and we're actually going to track against an, a specific host out there. Uh, we're actually going to track against the um, this IP address of the ISP. And if this router can reach this IP address through this interface, that will be the trigger for whether they send their traffic this way or go through the internet. So let's set up our first uh, scenario first, and let's hop onto router one and, and take a look at what we have. So here is, uh, here's the office router one, our remote office. Um, show IP route. Right now, the default route should be pointing directly to 4512. Yep. So that's their directly connected uh, route right here. Let's make sure they can get to the internet. We're just going to ping a very well-known IP address on the internet. And then we already know, based on our routing table, what the trace route output's going to be. And it'll be basically one hop away. Okay, so there we go. They're going out through their, their T1 link, like we said right now. What we want them to do is actually go out through this, this DS3, uh, connecting back to the corporate office. But we also want it so that when this goes down, they still use this link um, as their backup. So what we have right now is a very simple static route just sending their default route to their local ISP. So we're going to modify that just slightly to, to set it up for our, our tracking, our object tracking. Um, and what we're going to do is let, let's actually set up the object tracking first. It might make more sense if we do the object tracking first. So let's go ahead and set up. We want it. We're going to tell it to. Tra uh, we're going to tell this router to track. Um, and we got to give it a number. We're going to use number one, just an index number. We want it to track an IP route. Um, the route we want it to track is in the routing table. If it sees 10.2.2.0, uh, uh, in its routing table which is again this route right here. If this route is in the routing table via EIGRP in this case, uh, we want to track the reachability of that route. So there's our track statement. Track 
number one, we're checking to see if this route is in the routing table. So let's do a real quick uh, do show. When I looked at the routing table earlier, I didn't um, do show IP route. Okay, so we're, we're checking to make sure that this dynamically learned route is in the routing table. As long as this router sees this route in the routing table based on our track statement up here, then the track statement number one, track object number one is true. So we can do a show track um, number one and here we can see just our track object and we're telling it to track this route in the routing table uh, it says it's up the reachability of that route is up and it's because it sees it via EIGRP in the routing table so then what we want to tell it to do is based on that route show run include IP route based on the correctness of that track object or whether it's there or not we want to influence the the static route so what we're gonna do is we're going to introduce a new static route based on the reachability of track one uh, and we want to make that have a a lower administrative distance than the static route that's already here now this static route already has an admin distance of one so the first thing we gotta do is jack that up a little bit so we're gonna go into config t we're gonna say no on this one and then we're just gonna add it back up let's give it a, um, an administrative distance of 10 so we can sneak something in with a lower admin distance now what we want to do is add in that's still our route going to our directly connected ISP uh, right here that's still the route to the directly connected ISP now we're going to add in this route based on that track object with a lower admin distance of one. We're going to use the default admin distance for a static route. So what we're going to say is IP route default route uh, dot dot zero. Um, in this case, we want you to use uh, ten one one two as your default route ten dot one dot one dot one dot one dot two but we're going to add instead of an admin distance we're going to add the keyword track we're going to say based on track one which we which we defined right here track one being the reachability of this route in the routing table or being the fact that this route exists in the routing table so that takes care of so do show run include ip route let me just go over that real quick one more time so we got two static routes pointing to two different gateways. This is the directly connected one with an admin distance of 10. This is going up to our corporate HQ based on the availability of track one. If track one, which we defined up here, exists, this will be in our routing table with a lower admin distance and this will become our default route. If track one fails, this route will not exist in our routing table and thus it will pick up this route, this static route. So let's... Uh, uh, show track one which we already saw okay it's up it can see that route it's in the routing table let's do a show IP route let's look at our our default route so our default route is 10.1.1.2 right up here that's because that re it, the route is in the routing table so using our IPS our, our, our track object statement in our static route it set the next hop or the default route to be 10.1.1.2. So we can uh, let's make sure we can get uh, to the internet going out this direction to router one and then back out to the internet here. And now let's do a trace route uh, to that internet IP address. And as we can see, it's going to router one and then from router one, it's hopping over to gateway one and then out to the internet. So now let's see if it dynamically fails over when this route, which we told it to track, uh, no longer exists. So what I'm going to do for our office router to no longer see this route in its routing table, show IP route, to no longer see this route in its routing table, I'm going to fail this interface on router one manually. That will cause that route to be retracted from the, uh, to be removed from the route, the EIGRP. So it'll be removed from the routing table here. What should happen is our track statement should fail. 
that a static route based on the track statement should be retracted from the routing table and our admin distance 10 route should pick up. So let me hop on to R1. Um, let me see what interface that is. We want to oh, show IP interface brief. We want to fast 00. So we're going to fail fast 00 and then let's watch the window down here and see what happens. So interface fast 0 slash 0, we're going to shut it down. Now what that will do is cause that 10.2.2.0 route to be removed from the routing table. Okay, so it went down. And here we go. We can see down here that um, the object being tracked, 10.2.2.0 slash 30, the reachability went from up to down. So let's do those so same commands show track one all right we see the reachability is down there's no route all right and what it affected was the static IP route so let's do a show IP route and here we see that the static route that we put in based on the track statement to send it to 10 1 2 2 uh, 10 1 1 2 it's not in our routing table anymore it took it out and it used the default route with the admin distance of 10 and made that our default route. So from our office, we were going this way, this route disappeared, the router, based on its tracking object, stopped sending default traffic this way and started sending it to its directly inter connected uh, internet circuit. And let's see, make sure we can still get to the internet by pinging that IP address and let's do a trace route again. Okay, one hop away. If we go back onto uh, R1 and, and turn that interface back on, it should reverse itself. We're going to see down here that uh, there, there's our EIGRP stuff coming up, and we're going to see down here that our track should go from down to up. Let me scoot this over a little bit so you can see it. And there it is. It went, the route that it was told to track, the reachability state went from down to up. And if we do a show IP route now, we'll see that our default route is being sent back up to our corporate HQ router. So that's the first scenario. That's where we're using a route in the routing table to make uh, to track a route in the routing table to affect a, a static default route. Now what we're going to do this time, in this scenario, that's a very limited uh, use of the track because um, if something was to happen on gateway one or to this internet circuit, for example, uh, that object tracking wouldn't do us any good. It would still see this route in the routing table and it would still send default traffic here. So maybe Corp HQ really couldn't get to the internet, but because of what we're being what we're tracking here, um, it's not accomplishing our, our goal or for complete fail uh, of, uh, of this site. It's only looking at a route. Now you could expand that. Maybe this network right here was advertised into your internal routing table. Now if the Office One router saw this route disappear from the routing table, um, then it would be a little bit more truer to life. It would know that Corp HQ can't get to the internet because this link is down and then it would send its traffic this way. Okay, so what we're going to do for our second scenario for, ob uh, for uh, using tracking is we're going to introduce a little bit of IPSLA. And what we're going to do with IPSLA is basically we're going to check and make sure we can get to this IP address, this this, IS, this IP address of our ISP from this interface. If this router using this interface can ping this IP address, then we're going to send our, our internet bound traffic through this path. If it can't ping this IP address, then we're going to send it out uh, our locally connected route until it can ping this again and then it will flip it back over and send it out this way. Very similar mechanics to what we saw with the route, but we're going to look at a host in, in this case. Now there's a couple of things we have to do a little bit differently. In our office router, uh, we are still going to use show run include IP route. We are still going to use the same mechanism of using a trapped track object on our, on our, our static route. So we're still going to keep this in place. We want if track one's true, send it up to this router. If track one isn't true, then send it to our directly directly to our ISP. But what we do need to change is our track. So let's do a show run include track. 
we need to get rid of this track and, and set up a different, we want to track a different object. So right now we're tracking a row. We don't want to do that anymore. We're going to track an object. So let's get rid of this track statement first of all. All right, now the first thing we need to make sure of, show IP route, okay, so we got rid of that, so it's still pointing to this. We need to make sure this router can ping this IP address. I mean, there's no sense tracking against this or using this as our, our trigger mechanism if it can't get to it. So back to uh, our, our, uh, our office router. We are going to say ping 162.27.1. Well, let's be more specific. Specific. We want to make sure we can ping it from this interface. So let me slide this off just a little bit so we can. That was 129, right? Okay. So we want to say ping IP. Uh, target IP address is 162.27.193.129, which is uh, this IP address right here. We want to ping that. Uh, we'll, and then the only other thing, we want to say yes to the extended, and the source IP is 10.1.1.1. And hit enter on a bunch of this stuff that we don't want to see and we can see that it's not reachable. Uh, that's because our static route tells office, the Office router anything that you don't know that's in your routing table, send out to the internet. This switch, or this router, can't get to this IP address going this way. So what we need to do is influence make sure, I shouldn't say influence, but make sure that from this interface this router can ping that IP address. So to do that we're just going to introduce a static route. So config t uh, IP route to get to 162.27.193.129 I want you to go to 10.1.1.2 um, Oh, and I forgot the subnet mask, 255.255.255.255, just a host entry basically. Let me scoot that over. So there we are. To get to this internet IP address, I want you to go out this interface uh, so that it knows how to get there. And now if we ping, uh, do ping 162.27.193.129 we can get there so our router knows not to go not to use its default route and go this way but for that one IP address to go this way to get there to make sure it's pingable so now our, our test will be valid it'll be able to ping and monitor this IP address going through our internal network Okay, so we got that taken care of. Now what we need to do is set up an IPSLA because we want to track something that our router doesn't know about inherently. It's not in its routing table or any internal resources. So we need to set up, um, an, an I, we're going to use an IPSLA statement to, to basically continuously ping this IP address. And our track object, we're going to track based on, this, on whether that IPSLA is true or false. So to do that, uh, we're going to do IP SLA and then we're going to use object number one because it'll be our first one and we hit return. Now the next thing we want to do is tell it which protocol do we want to use for our IP SLA. We can do DNS, DHCP, HTTP, FTP. We're going to use um, we're going to use we're going to use an echo. We're going to ping it. So basically that's what we want to use. Now what do we want to ping? One 162.27.193.129 162.27.193 so we want to ping this IP address and we're going to add another thing in there we want to use a source IP of we want to ping this IP address sourcing it from this IP 10.1.1.1 so 10.1.1.1 okay now we also want to add in there, um, let's do a question mark, 
we want to add in a couple other things. We're going to change the timeout. So I'm just going to set this uh, to 1000. And we want, it to, we want to change the frequency. How often is it going to ping? Um, is it going to ping that IP address? Default to 60 seconds. We're going to bring it down to three seconds just so we don't have to wait for so long. Okay, so that's our that's our show run. That's our. Uh, oh, forgot to do. Let me show you real quick. So that's our IPSLA statement coming up here in a second. Okay. So we're doing an echo, we're pinging this IP address using that source interface with our timeout and frequency. Now with IPSLA, you have to schedule it. You can tell it when to run and when to start and you know start and stop times and time of day and things like that. So what we need to do now is IPSLA schedule uh, for track one because we, we were using IPSLA one. So for object one, uh, we're going to set the lifetime to be uh, forever. And the other value that we're going to set is we're going to tell it the start time, start time, and start now. Okay, so that should start our IPSLA doing its pings. So if we do a show IPSLA, I believe it's stat. Okay, here's our, you can see four. Uh, index number one or IPSLA number one um, it's okay it's able to track that object it's supposed it's able to ping that object using the echo response it's done it four times so far four successful and zero failures so if we refresh this we should see okay now it went up to 11 so it's successfully able to ping and get a response from this IP address right here now we need to create a tracking object based on that IP on this IPSLA that we just set up. So we are going to go back into our config because remember our our route is based on the our, our retraction of that static route is based on the availability of track one. So let me just do a sh quick do show run include IP route. So remember Remember that our, our static route has the track one keyword behind it. Okay, so here's our track one keyword for our, our static route. So we've set up IPSLA number one, which is our echo, our ping. Now we gotta take that IPSLA and relate it to a track value so that our, 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 our router will retract or re keep this route in based on the return value of a track. So now we're just going to take what we do here is we take our, we create another track, track one. We're gonna call it track one because again, we're basing it on track one right here. So track one, uh, and instead of doing an IP route like we did the previous example, we're gonna use RTR, response time reporter. Uh, and we put in the entry number here. In this case, it's our SLA index number, which is number one. And then we wanna track the reachability. So track ID number one, uh, the RTR response time reporter based on SLA object number one. Enter. So now we have our SLA object number one, we have our track number one, and we have our static route that is based on track one. So let's take a look and see if these three pieces worked together. So what we should see, if we just hop right directly into and look at our routing table, let's do that, show IP route, we should see that our default route is right there. It's pointing up to router one because this corporate or our office switch can ping this IP address. The track is true because the track is based on that IP SLA. The track is true. So it put in a static route with an administrative distance of one telling us our next hop is right up there. So, um, oh, wrong router. We've seen, uh, we know this will work, but let's just do a ping 4.2.2.2. We'll try and get out to the internet. And trace route 4.2.2.2. And there we go. We get out to the internet going through our corporate headquarters. 
So now let's cause a failure. Let's, um, we can't really shut down, I can pull the plug here, but let's shut down this interface. So on gateway one, we're just gonna shut down this interface to simulate a failure way out here. Now remember last time we could only track this route. So the failure had to occur here. We couldn't do anything further out. But now we could, if we could influence the ISP, we could actually shut down this interface right here. Or, but what we're gonna do is the next best thing. The farthest out that we can cause a failure is to disconnect this interface right here on our gateway router. So let's hop under our gateway router, shut down this interface, and we should see the IPSLA should start to fail. It'll turn our track into a, a false value and that route should be pulled from our routing table. So let's hop on to gateway one. Here's our gateway one router right here. Um, show IP interface brief, which one's got the 130 on it? Fast zero one. So let me do this real quick. Let me bring up this so we can see this in, this is our corporate router or office router. Um, let me shut down that interface. Uh, what did I say it was? Zero one. Now this is going to happen no matter which interface we are shut down, but I want to kick it out as far as possible. So zero one, we're going to say shut. Okay, so there goes our interface. Now our IS, our uh, IP SLAs should not be able to ping that interface anymore. This interface here, they can't ping it anymore. So it should start returning false, which our track object will start returning a value of false, which will retract that route from our routing table. And we did see that already. The reachability went from up to down. We do a show IP route. We can see that instead of sending our default traffic to our corporate HQ, router one in our corporate HQ, it's sending it out its directly connected interface right here. If we, let's take a look at a couple of the, the variables. So if we do show IP SLA, I can't remember if it's, yeah, statistics. Okay, we can see here, return code, no connection. We have some previous successes and now it's starting to fail. Our IP SLA, our echo is failing. If we do a refresh, it's still failing, still failing because the interface is still down. Let's do a show, uh, show track one. Because remember track one is looking at uh, IP SLA one. Track one, we see the reachability is down. And we know when the reachability is down, it's retracting that static route from our routing table. So again, that static route is completely missing from our routing table. It's not in there anywhere. It was pulled out. And our next hop is being sent to the directly connected internet circuit. And we can completely reverse that. Let's go back into gateway here. Let's do a no shut. Bring that back up. And what we should see here on our office router is our reachability should go from state down to state up. Our IP SLA should start to be able to ping that, that ISP interface. And there we go. We're back up. Let's do a show IP route. Okay, it changed our default route to point back to the corporate HQ. Here, right here when it was failed, that was pointing out the directly connected internet circuit. Now it's pointing back to the corporate HQ. And that's because show IP SLA. Okay, let's see which number. The 107 should be increasing now because it's returning a true response. So there, it's true, true. And counters are incrementing. And if we do a show track one, we well can see that the reachability is up. So there's a quick demonstration on a couple of things you can use IPSLA for um, when influencing something like a route or a default route or any kind of route, but in this case we used a default route to get us out to the internet. One scenario based on whether a route was in the local routing table of the device. In the second scenario, when this device tried to reach an object uh, several hops away and it was monitoring that object several hops away to determine what it should do with its own routes. Now that's the end of the of the uh, little tutorial here with the Cisco routers but I did want to show you something uh, interesting at least I find it interesting. I guess I shouldn't find it interesting but I do. Um, let me just uh, show run include IP uh, let's do show run section IP SLA so we can bring up our IP SLA statement that we did. I'm going to do a show run include track. Okay, so those are these are the objects that we had to create to make this work. 
um, our IPSLA statement, our track statement, and then our, our static route based on the, the availability of track one. Now I want to hop over to an ASA box and uh, look at the scenario on an ASA box. So uh, let's pop over to ASA here real quick. And I don't have it shrunk down so you can see the whole thing in the window. But where we are in the ASA box here is, uh, let me let me make it a little bit so we can kind of see where we are here in the ASA box. All right, right there. So in the ASA box, we're in our static routing. And here we have a static default route on our ASA box, right? I want to add a failover static IP address on our ASA box. If this one isn't available, I want it to use a different one. Um, so same type of scenario as what we just went through with our routers. So off to the right here, I'm clicking a button called Add. I want to add a static default route, and I'm just going to bring it into the window. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to make up some values here real quick because I just want to show you the, the syntax. So um, uh, we want to default route. Uh, let's just change. This is going to be uh, 1669.254.200. Let's make something up 59. I'm going to leave the metric alone for now. And I want this to be tracked. So I'm just setting up another default route. Now uh, we're going to use 1, 1, tracking IP address. I don't remember what we used in the lab, so we're just going to say 4.2.2.2 here. Uh, track inside. Okay. Um, and here, if we click monitoring options, here is where we can set up the frequency and the thresholds and the timeouts like we, we did. These are the default values. Um, and I'm just going to hit OK here and not going to worry about this because I'm not really doing it. I just want to show you um, what it looks like. So let me scoot this up a little bit because I want to hit the apply button so that uh, we can see the code that's going to be sent to the ASA box. So here's the actual code that's being sent to the ASA box. And let me bring up our code right below that. So look at look at this. I mean, they are they are they they're doing the exact same thing. So um, let me scoot everything up just a little bit higher so we can get it all in there. Um, so here's our uh, um, here's what we did on the router, right? So we have a um, track one RTR one reachability. And here's what it does on the ASA box. Track one, RTR one reachability. Here's their SLA statement, not number one. They're doing an echo. They're echoing this IP address using this interface. And here's our IP SLA statement. We're using an echo. We're pinging against this IP address. We're using this source IP address or interface. Uh, we use the default values up here in the ASA box, so you don't see the timeout and the frequency up here. Um, and here's the schedule. Schedule 1 start time is now, life is forever, and what did we do down here? We did schedule life forever start time now. Um, so it does the exact same thing when you use the ASDM for ASA, or if you type it in uh, using the CLI for ASA, and what we're doing on the routers, uh, it's doing the same thing. We're using IPSLAs, we're tracking objects, we're setting default routes, we're setting um, um, changing administrative distances on default routes, and we're retracting routes based on the reachability or the pingability of, of a host somewhere out there, whatever we want to track against. So that was our little lesson here on, uh, on using object tracking once where the router is tracking something that it has in its local resources, such as the routing table. And again, using extending our, our IP tracking or our, our, our object tracking and extending it using IPSLA so we can monitor something that's many, many hops away. Um, so there you go.